Romans chapter 14. <clears throat> Romans chapter 14, starting at verse 1. Thanks, Jerry. Romans chapter 14, verse 1. We're going to look at observing days and eating certain foods. I mean, obviously, we can see from Romans there that there was question by some, and I would believe most likely Jewish people, that they didn't want to, they quit eating meat. They, you know, they would be vegetarians, and they would, would have looked down on anybody. They would have judged somebody, really, that was eating meat of any kind. I'm talking about livestock, that type of thing. They would have been critical of that person. They would have been judging that person. They would have looked at him as a compromiser in reality. So let's just take a look at this passage of Scripture. We're looking mainly at the observing of days type thing. Romans chapter 14. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him that eateth judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth, yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just pray for this time in your word, Lord. I pray that you'd help me to be a blessing and attentive ears to hear tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So that last verse that we read was verse 14 that really kind of ties it all up here. So I would definitely believe it's talking about, you know, nothing is unclean of itself, Paul says, for I know and am persuaded of the, by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean in itself. So we can see that they were not eating certain foods, and it, I would believe it would have had to do with Jewish dietary laws. And I, I believe that the Jewish dietary laws were no longer binding in that it, anymore in New Testament times. We see that in, in the book of Colossians, that's one of them that was nailed to the cross. And also the, the Sabbath days, the feast days, and so on, all those things were really nailed to the cross. So some people never got the message on that. So they were really still holding to some of those things. And some people that were weak in the faith were even bringing it further and just saying, you know something, I'm not going to eat any meat at all. And most likely, they said that probably because it doesn't say it in this passage of Scripture, but most likely it's because of eating things sacrificed to idols. To, to be on the safe side, they would have just said, well, I'm not going to eat any meat at all, because i tell you what, they, they were already convinced they, that, that they had not gotten liberty from the Lord, or at least why they didn't understand Christian liberty. The, the word of liberty, nothing is unclean of itself, 
Verse 14, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth, or that he looks at it, anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. And obviously, if, if no matter what it is, if you look at something that you are doing as being wrong, maybe you got the idea chewing gum. I remember when I was in school, we were not allowed to chew gum in school. I, th- I actually thought there was something wrong with gum. You know, I thought it was one. You know, it was it was a taboo to chew gum. I can understand why. It's not real pleasant when you're preaching or t- trying to teach, and somebody's. Mm, I can see why they had that rule. Plus, I t- tell you what, sticking the gum underneath a pew. Whoever's doing that, please stop. No, I'm just kidding you. But I, I think there, I, I have found some gun or gum underneath the pews. By the way, don't do those kind of things. But you know, again. If you esteem something to be unclean, that's what they were doing. I would believe that they were still holding to Jewish dietary laws. That's what they were doing. And they were also holding to feast days, the Sabbath day, and some of those things. And obviously, Christian liberty, those things were nailed to the cross. Judge no man, therefore, in meat or in drink or in respect of a new moon or the Sabbath days and this kind of thing. You know, that was a shadow. You know, obviously, it's a picture and once the Christ came, died on the cross, those things are not to be done anymore. I mean, and don't judge anybody. And see, the weak person was the one that you're judging in this passage of Scripture. The, the, the person that was strong, that was strong in the faith, what he was doing, he despised the person that, that didn't go along with him. You know, both of them had knowledge. They looked at things differently, and you got the weak one in the faith, you know, if you didn't hold everything and if you had ate any meat at all is how he would have looked at it. Uh, I don't believe the Lord has received you. I, I, it would be another way of saying, I don't believe you're saved. Let's read the first three verses once here. By the way, before we do that, let's look at chapter 15, verse 1. Paul looked at himself as a strong person. And he was persuaded of the Lord. Notice what it says here. We then that are strong, we would include Paul there. We that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. You know, again, we need to be concerned about verse 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. And verse 4 says, and we're going to get into this in the future. Notice this, verse 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, and the context would be obviously eating things, you know, eating certain foods, and certain foods being unclean, and also the feast days and the Sabbath days, they were, those things were written aforetime, were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hoped. So those things were written for our learning. And I believe we can learn some things from those, and I'll get into that in another message. But let's just take a look and start at chapter 14, verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. But not to doubtful disputations. That's what they were supposed to do. They were not, they were to receive the brother, but not to doubtful disputations. What are doubtful disputations? Well, I I put in my margin, doubtful disputations, another way of saying that, you're supposed to receive that, brother, but not unto the discussion of doubts. In other words, if that person looks at things a certain way, I'm going to tell you something right now. Don't try to change his opinion. Don't try to don't cause a big stir. Don't act. Don't despise him. And for the person that has a different opinion and he's weak in the faith, you know, don't judge the other person. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputation. Don't take that weak brother and just receive him just for the sake of arguing with him. Some people like to argue. I'll show him. I'll tell him. You know, if somebody doesn't see things the way they really are, by the way, he's weak in the faith because he doesn't really realize that those things are done away in Christ. Let me tell you something right now. He doesn't understand liberty. You know, nothing is unclean of itself. And, And obviously, the weak in the faith don't look at it that way. So he hasn't come to the point of what things are done away with when you're in Christ. 
he hasn't come to that point. But, you know, receive him. And I, I believe to talk about receive him into the church. Receive him and, 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 and be a friend to him. But don't, don't sit there and argue with him. <laughs> You're just, if, if that's the only time you'll have anything to do with him, when you want to criticize him and put him down, don't do it because you're not going to do any good. You need to have give somebody time to grow. Verse 2, what are the problems here? Well, one of the problems was eating certain things. For one believeth that he may eat all things, and that would be the strong brother. That would be the apostle Paul. Nothing is unclean of itself. He, so one person, one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak, eateth herbs. You know, what are herbs? Vegetables. It would be like a vegetarian. You know, there are people today that believe it's wrong to eat meat. So, and, and again, really our paganistic culture, to be honest with you, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but our paganistic culture is very much into vegetarianism. And recently, there was a, a movie that came out. And recently, it might have been five years ago. I don't know how long ago. It, was, it probably might have been longer than that. It was a movie about the Noah. Who, who watched that Noah movie? You know, tell me who's been doing it. I, I was given that movie, but I never really wasted my time watching it. But the person that gave it to me to watch you know, was telling me that you know, basically the, 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 the pr reason for the flood was because they were eating meat. But does the Bible teach anything like that? What does the Bible teach about meat, eating of meat in relationship to the flood? Does anybody know? The Bible teaches that actually God allowed them to eat meat after the flood. I would say if I'm reading my Bible, I would believe that nobody really ate meat until after the flood. That's what I see. So, I mean, that was the, it, 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 the flood wasn't caused because they, somebody was eating meat. You know, this, this is, again, this, this movie was put out by a bunch of pagans trying to understand the Bible. And again, you know, I, I believe some of our things of getting rid of cattle today, you know, there's a real kick, on, kick against cows. And, you know, behind all this is a lot of this vegetarian foolishness. It's, it's really paganism, Mother Earth, and some of this nonsense. You know, these cattle are hurting Mother Earth. And I'm not going to get into the reason why, if you know about what's, where, what goes up and so on and so forth. But anyway, it's a bunch of nonsense. But here we see, obviously, the weak person, he, he, he only was a vegetarian. Now, I, I believe the reason quite possibly, obviously, he held to the Jewish dietary laws. And I also, even though it's not, like I said earlier, it's not mentioned here, most likely he also would have believed, you know, something there, there was eating things and sacrifice to idols back then. So I'm just going to be on the safe side. And the apostle Paul even talked about that. You know, I, I won't eat any meat as long as the earth standed. If, if I cause my brother to offend, that is the right attitude to have. If you, if your brother is offended with what you're eating, don't eat it in front of him. That's the teaching. Don't cause him to stumble. But I'll tell you what, one thing to say is, a weak brother, also, most of this is directed toward a weak brother. He needs to grow up. And he better get to the point where he doesn't judge the strong brother. That's what we really see here. So it's not just the strong that need to say, hey, I need to be careful of what I do. We both need to be careful. Whether you're weak or whether you're strong, you need to be careful about what you're doing. The, the weak brother need to be careful that he didn't judge his strong brother. Here, let me just read again verse 3. Let not him that eateth despise. The word despise, in another place, set it not. You look at him as you're a nobody. You're nothing. That then you, you, you would look at him with disdain. You really despise the person. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Let not him that eateth judge. See, the strong brother had the idea, well, you're a nobody anyway. You don't know anything, so I'm not even going to listen to you. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Where the weak brother, he, he would have been the, the kind of person that he would judge. And he didn't really have the knowledge, you know, to judge. You know, as, we, as we're going to look at the things, eating things and sacrifice to idols, 
we're going to understand there's everybody has knowledge. But a lot of times the things that we know, knowledge puffs up. And none of us really know everything like we ought to know. So, you know, the thing is, you're not going to convince somebody that's persuaded of a certain thing. You know, you got to let God change him. And the same with the same with the weaker brother here. Notice, let not him that eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. For God hath received him. You know, th this is now we don't have this kind of thing in our society today, because I, I don't think there's anybody at Norfolk Baptist Church that it would say, well, I'll tell you what, if anybody eats meat, I don't believe God received you. I don't think we're going to have that. But I'll tell you what, I have had people tell me, I don't think that guy's a Christian because I saw him smoking a cigarette. And I'll be quite frank with you. I'm not in favor of smoking cigarettes, by the way. But I'll tell you what, you can't assume that. You are way out there to, to assume that just because somebody fires up a cigarette that he's lost. Uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, again, I'm not trying to promote smoking cigarettes. I try to do everything to get you not to smoke cigarettes. You know, there's other things that are questionable. That, you know, just because somebody did something, don't assume that he's lost. You know, you can see, for God hath received him. You know, they would have looked at it again. I'll tell you what, God didn't receive him. You know, why should I receive him? God didn't receive it. You know, he's, he's, he's eating meat. Even though we see very clearly from the scripture, he has that liberty. Now, I don't believe that you got the liberty to smoke cigarettes, by the way. I'm not trying to throw that in there. But I'm saying the thing about it is, when you're a ch first a Christian, there's a lot of things you don't even see. I I'll tell you what, when I was first saved, I never even looked at smoking cigarettes as being wrong. I'll be quite frank with you. I never looked at it that way. But just because somebody smokes a cigarette, don't run around assuming that he's lost. But I'll tell you what, if somebody's smoking a cigarette, I wouldn't probably have a what would Jesus do sticker on the back bumper either, because I guarantee you Jesus wouldn't be smoking that cigarette. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I don't think you ought to put Jesus' name to some of your foolishness. If you're going to be doing things like that, keep the stickers, bumper stickers off. <laughs> don't, don't drag Jesus' name through the mud. Verse 4 says, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? See, I'll tell you what, we're servants of God. And I'll tell you what, a, a young Christian or anybody, you don't know where somebody's at. I cannot judge somebody's motives. I cannot judge by this person. I don't know why he does what he does or thinks what he thinks. But I, I look back at myself. I remember the first time I ever heard, I remember smoking a cigarette. My brother told me, he said, that's worldly. I, I never, I didn't, I didn't think that was the first time I ever heard worldly even. But it bothered me. And I'll tell you what, it bothered me. I remember Howard Meyer saying to me, I lit up a cigarette. He said, is the Holy Spirit in there? You know, I, I, I tell you what, you know, <laughs> yeah. I had to ask myself, does the Lord really want me to do these things? You know, I, and I, I believe we need to. But you know something? Who art thou that judges another man's servant? We are the Lord's. And, you know, whatever we eat, whatever we drink, whatever we do, we're supposed to do it to the glory of God. But I'll tell you something right now. I believe we, we all have to allow one another to grow and to change. Because I tell you what, you, first, you don't know that person's upbringing. You don't know what, what, what his thinking was growing up, especially in our society today. You know, I, I was raised... In a society, any physical relations outside of marriage was absolutely taboo. I knew it was wrong when I was a little kid. I didn't even know what thou shalt not commit adultery was, but I remember learning that as a little kid. And then you learn, as you began to learn what those things meant, you knew that that kind of thing was wrong. I'll tell you what, our society is not like that today. There's a lot of people out here that, I'm mean, the truth is, they didn't grow up hearing those things. Even when a person first gets saved, I'm going to tell you something right now. It, it might shock you, the things that he doesn't know. It's it, the things that he doesn't understand. That's what we see. That's, that's our society today. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, 
He shall be holden up. Who's going to hold him up? For God is able to make him stand. It's God when you, that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So if you are a child of God, God is beginning a work in your life, and you're going to continue to see and see and see and change and change. That's the way God works. And we have to be careful that we're not like the weak brother that, boy, I'll tell you what, I, I got saved, and I tell you what, I don't believe you ought to eat those unclean things, and I don't think you ought to do this. And even though you, you don't really know what you're talking about because there's Christian liberty here, and you, it, it, again, as we get to the part of eating things sacrificed to idols, you know, some, remember, ask no questions for conscience sake. So go out in the shambles and, and go out and buy and, and ask no questions because I tell you what, it's not going to, as long as you don't know about it, it didn't change the meat any. But once you know about it, don't mess with it. Or if somebody tells you, hey, that's been sacrificed to idols, guess what? You need to stay away from it. Because I'll tell you what, you don't want to be have fellowship with idols we see in 1 Corinthians. You don't want to do that. But God is able to make him stand. That's what you need to be concerned with. You know, weak brother, you know something? God is able to make him stand. Don't, it's not your job to run around and correct everybody. It's not your job to do that. Then we see verse 5, so we see the other aspect is days. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Again, the Sabbath days, the feast days. I would believe that's definitely what it's talking about. That's one reason why I believe it's the biggest problem was the Jewish people that would have not really understood Christian liberty, that would not have understood that the eating of certain meats were done. You, you could, there's nothing unclean in itself. And also the Sabbath days, the feast days and those things, you know, they were nailed to the cross. If you wonder about that, I believe it's Colossians chapter two, around the 17th verse, right around there. That's very clearly what it talks about. And I'm going to get into that for sure. Uh, when I talk about the judgment seat of Christ and some of those things, but I'm not going to get into that this morning or this evening. One man esteemeth er, er, one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. You know, that, the thing is, you have to be, whatever you're persuaded of, how you look at it, if you esteem something to be unclean, it is unclean. You know, if you grow up believing, you know, like, like a Seventh-day Adventist today, I guarantee you a Seventh-day Adventist today, you're not going to talk to me to eat a pork sandwich with you. You're just not going to do it. That's the way he grew up. And I'll tell you what, if a Seventh-day Adventist got saved you know, and started really following the Word of God, then he would see that what he's been up to is wrong. You know, Unfortunately, they don't really have any liberty in Christ. But then again, they, they believe a lot of false error and doctrine. You know, this doctrine of soul sleep and so on and so forth. I, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. You know, Lord's the Lord of the living and the dead, we see in this passage of Scripture. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the, unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Whatever you do, make sure that you can thank God for it. Well, if, you, if, if all you really honestly believe that all you can eat is vegetables, I'll tell you something right now. You'll, you'll do fine as long as you have your beans, won't you, Joaquin? Because, I mean, you got to have your protein. It means you're going to have protein. And so there's not like you can't get any protein from those things, you know, different things like that. But, you know, make sure that whatever you do, you're fully persuaded in your own mind that what you're doing is correct and you thank God for what he gave you. That's what you need to do. You need to be a thankful people. Just like when it talks about in Timothy about some of these things, you know, it's, you know, things being clean when it's given thanksgiving to God and so on. Make sure that you can give God thanks. You know, there'll be some certain things like, I don't think you're going to light up a marijuana cigarette and give God thanks for that thing. I, I don't believe, you know, that, that's nonsense. 
or drinking a beer and, and doing that to the glory of God and giving God thanks. That's foolishness. Let's be honest about it. Whatever you do, you got to be persuaded in your mind that that's what God says. And you could be wrong, but I'm going to tell you what, don't go against your conscience. Don't go against what you believe is right. If you're persuaded that's what it is, stick with it. If you esteem something to be unclean, to you it is unclean. Don't be changed until you really have a change of mind. When your mind changes, and it needs to change from the Word of God. But you need to be able to give God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself. We don't live in a bubble. We don't live on an island. Things that we do affect other people. And I need to be careful of what I, no matter what I do, that I don't cause somebody to stumble. That's what, that's what I got to be concerned about. My, I'm going to have a message on that Sunday night about causing people to stumble. But I, I, I don't let, I, no matter what I do, I influence people. The things that I do, the things that you do, the things that you do, you influence people. And if you are doing something that somebody views as wrong, you are encouraging that person to do wrong. As a preacher, you'd be surprised how many times somebody say, well, he does it or that church does it. They, they think it's okay. I, you know, again, I have to go by what God's word says. I can't go against what, just because somebody else holds something, I don't hold to it. I have to be pulled for, fully persuaded in my own mind. That's what I'm going to hold to. It, uh, again, a lot of times people are wrong about things. And I, I, if somebody could show me where I'm wrong, I would agree with that. But you've got to show me where I'm wrong. But again, none of us liveth to himself. And no man dieth to himself. Or whether we live, a, we live unto the Lord. You say, whatever you do, are you living for the Lord? Could somebody eat vegetables, thinks he's doing right, give God thanks, and he, as far, he's not there. He ain't doing nothing wrong. There's not a thing wrong with what he's doing. Now, he really does have liberty, being in Christ, to go ahead and eat meat, but he don't see it that way. And because he doesn't see it that way, he better not go that way. Because I'll tell you what, he really wouldn't be living unto the Lord. If, he's, if you think you're doing something wrong, you're not really living unto the Lord. You know, that's just the way it is. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For this end, Christ both died and rose again, revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? So that's the, that's the strong, that's a weak one. Here we see he's the weak one, verse 10. And But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set thy brother at naught? Set at naught thy brother. That, that's, the, that's the strong one where you're a nobody. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're saying. And you know, the, the truth of the matter is the weak one probably doesn't know what he's saying. But I'll tell you what, he better not go against what, what, his, what knowledge he does have. I would never ever ask somebody to go against their conscience. I, I don't believe you should go against it. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a good idea to let your conscience be your guide. I believe you ought to let God's word be your guide. But I'm going to tell you something right now. It's never, ever wise to go against your conscience. But why dost thou judge thy brother, weak person? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother, strong Christian? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I guarantee you, who's the one that's going to judge? He, who's, who's the one that's going to judge your service, whether you're doing it to the Lord or not? I don't know. You know, people got all kinds of different ideas on things. But I'll tell you what, one thing for sure is every one of us are going to give an account of himself to God. And my message on, on Sundays for Sunday school is going to be, the judgment seat of Christ is what I'm going to look at. I, I think a lot of times we don't stop and think about the judgment seat of Christ. If you're a Christian today, when you are resurrected or the meeting in the air, whatever, you are going to stand and give an account and you are going to be judged by your works. You're going to be judged for your service. You're going to be judged here according how you treated the weaker brother, the stronger brother, and how you, how you treated other people. You thought you knew so much, 
and really didn't know nothing as you ought to know. You need to be careful about these things because you're going to stand before God and you're going to give account. Have you caused somebody to stumble by the things that you allowed? And yes, we do need to be concerned about the weaker brother. We need to be very concerned about him that we don't cause him to stumble and actually to go against his conscience. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We're going to give an account of ourselves, shall give account of himself. You're not going to, it's not going to be when you stand before the Lord, well, Doman did it. (laughs) That's not going to fly. Or that church said it was okay. That's not going to fly. You're going to give an account of your service. Did I obey God? Did I do his will? Did I do what God wanted me to do? And see, like the weak brother, that's often what he's thinking. He really does have Christian liberty. But I'll tell you something right now. If he goes against his conscience and goes ahead and eats and actually thinks that it's wrong, it is sin. That's what the Bible says. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 8, I believe it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And this is talking... Mainly, this here is talking about eating things sacrificed to idols, but you're going to see that the same principles are here. And I would, again, I would believe that quite possibly that this is one of the reasons why some people would have said, well, I'm just not going to eat anything. No, I'm not going to eat meat at all, and not anything. I'm going to eat just vegetables because, you know, maybe it's sacrificed to idols. And he's overly, how should I say it, restrictive of himself. Because he thinks it's, I, I, I don't even want to run, run the possibility of eating things sacrificed to idols. Which, you know, to be honest with you, in a way that's kind of commendable. I, 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 I believe in some ways we, we would be a good idea to stay away. You know, he understood the doctrine of separation anyway. That's what we see. But anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, it says, Now concerning things offered Unto idols. See, again, remember there were questions asked in, in the, to the church at Corinth. Chapter 7, you know, talks about marriage. So the, if you want to know about marriage questions, chapter 7 would be the one to go to. Chapter 8, now touching or concerning things offered unto idols. So this is what this whole chapter is about, this subject right here. Touching things offered unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. We all, every one of us knows some things. Now we see the weak brother, some of his knowledge was flawed. But you know, the, the, the strong person, if he doesn't have leniency toward, and he despises this other one, you know, his knowledge, he, he's lacking and he might be right about what he's saying, but I guarantee you the way he's going about it's the wrong way. So you can be right in your position, but wrong in your disposition. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can be right in your position, but wrong in your disposition. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up. You don't really go by things by what you know or what the other person, because we all have different opinions on things. Knowledge puffs up, but charity edifieth. That's what we, I tell you what, everything that we do has to be motivated by love. We need to be concerned about building up. That's what edification means, ed- edifying. Charity edifies. I, whatever I do, I, I want to make sure I build the other person up. Now, if I go there and blast him a good one and tell him how stupid he is, you know, and you don't know what you're talking about, which he probably really doesn't know what he's talking about. But if I go about it in that kind of an attitude, I'm not going in the attitude of love. And I'm probably not going to have a very good effect. I'm surely not going to build him up by by blowing my knowledge and showing how smart I am. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. That's a good attitude to have. I tell you what, we all don't know what we ought to know. There's, I tell you what, I believe we all have shortcomings in our knowledge. 
we need to be very careful how we come off to people. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Yeah, I believe that love for God, you need, if you're going to love God, you're going to love your brethren, you're going to be motivated by love, and that's the way you need to go about it. As concerning, therefore, eating those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, notice we know. Every, every, I guarantee you, the whole audience that was listening, all the people at Corinth, everybody that's saved, that's who this is written to, the church at Corinth. He's saying, we know that an idol is nothing. Are there really, is that little idol that's made out of wood or stone or metal formed with men's hands? Is that really a God? They're, they're really nothing. They're, they really are nothing. That's what we... So, I mean, you can... You, by the way, you could use that for a justification. Well, it's nothing, so I can go ahead and eat things sacrificed to idols. Well, that's not when you look at the whole passage of Scripture, especially as you get in later chapters. I'm not going to get into that. You know, the, what's behind all this is the devil. So I, I don't believe the Lord wants us involved with eating things sacrificed to idols because... Any false worship, there's a devil behind it. So we need to stay away from that. But the truth is, there is only one God. Notice this again, verse 4. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, yeah, there's, they're called gods. And this is to the, to the church at Corinth, which obviously Corinth was the area of Greece and so on and so forth, where they had all those Greek gods and Greek mythology and all this other stuff. So, I mean, that are called God, whether in heaven or in earth. They had gods in heaven. You know, I think one of them was like someone like Zeus and Apollo. Jupiter, and I don't know if I'm naming some Roman names in there. Some of those had different names that they were Greek and Roman, so I'm not going to get into all that. But you can see that even all of our planets are named after false gods. And, and, and you know, So there were heavenly gods, there were earthly gods. That's what he's saying. They're, that's the, they're, Obviously, they're false. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us. To us Christians here at Corinth, to us here hopefully at Norfolk Baptist Church, there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So we, we believe there's one God, there's one Lord Jesus Christ. Those are things that we believe. Howbeit, there is not in every man that knowledge. Not everybody looks at that that way. For some with the conscience of an idol. <laughs> yeah, you know, there were some people that still, can you imagine you just got saved? And you, I'm going to tell you something right now. These people that were involved in idolatry and worshiping idols and so on and so forth saw all kinds of manifestations of things. I told you not too long ago, about that book, Demons in the World Today, where in China, you know, where they, they worship this idol, and the guy was, as long as he worshiped this idol, he was, he was free from sickness. When he got saved and quit worshiping the idol, his sickness came back. So I, I guarantee you, if you have somebody like that, he's going he's gonna to have conscience of that idol. Conscience has to do with your knowledge. You're going to think, there's something to that. Let me tell you something right now. The Native Americans that are into spiritism, I guarantee you, they see things and have heard things and experienced things that most of us never know anything about. It's the truth. I would say in Mexico it's that way. You know, there's a lot more demonic activity down there. And, you know, so you get somebody that gets saved out of, out of that kind of an environment, I guarantee you. He's going to look at it differently than someone like me. Now, I was, a, I was just a Catholic boy. We never messed around with idols and so on. We had praying and Mary and all, but nothing like we're seeing here. You understand what I'm saying? It's not really like we're seeing here. 
So, I mean, I didn't, I, I never saw any, any angel or Mary talking or any taco or, you know, uh, see us in this taco. I saw Jesus and whoever, who remembers that? Wasn't it uh, some taco that looked like Jesus or something like that? Tortilla. Or tortilla. Okay. <laughs> I don't know a taco from a tortilla, but anyway, you know, something like that, you know, there's all kinds of foolishness out there. But, you know, somebody that holds that superstitious stuff, you know, and then he comes to Christ and really he's going to still look at some of that stuff. There's, there's a little differently. For some with the conscience of an idol unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered to an idol. They, they're going to look at it. I'm really actually offering this to a God because I've seen all the power that's there. Is there power in demonic activity? Yes, there is. If you don't believe it, read the Bible. Look at Pharaoh and the magicians during the, during the time of Moses and all the powers that they had. I remember when I was first saved reading that, I'm thinking, wow, I can't believe they could do those things. I never saw anything like that. But can you see somebody that come out of that kind of environment? They're a little different. And their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat commendeth us not to God. I tell you what, whether you eat this or don't eat that, it's not going to commend you to God. You know, eating a hot dog or not eating a hot dog is not going to make any difference. Well, I, I stay away from those things. I don't eat any meat. So it's not going to make you more godly or less godly. And the person that eats the hamburger, he's fine. <laughs> There's not a problem here. You know, but meat commendeth us not to God for neither. If we eat, are we the better? Neither if we eat not, are we the worse? You know, again, you're making something out of nothing. But take heed lest by any means this liberty. See, again, I, I'm at liberty. I can Nothing is unclean. I don't have to follow the Jewish dietary laws. I can have a, a sausage. I can have bacon. Aren't you glad that that's over with? <laughs> you know I can have a bacon sandwich. It may not be the best thing for my cholesterol, but I'll tell you something, it sure tastes good. And, you know, I have liberty, but take heed lest by the... By any means, this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. So in other words, if you had somebody that's weak, don't, don't do those things in front of him. You know, there'd be some people today that don't, they, they might even be Christians that, that, that don't eat pork, let's say. I know some Christians that don't eat pork, by the way, but they, they don't hold to it as, as it's unclean or anything like that. They just think it's better if you don't. But, but you know, the thing about it is, if somebody looks at this, the raw, how, how you would look at it, and you have the liberty, but I'll tell you, don't use that liberty. Don't, don't allow them to, to stumble because you eat something that they look at be, as being wrong. Don't do it. That's, that's what's being taught here. I, do I have to be careful of how I deal with people and w what the other person thinks? You know, if I was trying to reach a Jew for Christ, to be honest with you, if you're going to have him come over, don't don't uh, serve pork chops. You know what I'm saying? Don't do it. Because I mean, you know, you're 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 asking him to do something that would go against his conscience. Because I mean, you know, that's just the way it is. Even a, a Jew, obviously, that remember Peter. Remember when the Lord said, showed him, brought this sheet down with all manner of critters on it, and he, 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 the Lord said, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. What was Peter's response? Not so, Lord. <laughs> Nothing unclean has ever come into my mouth. See, he was he did he really have the liberty? Yes, he did, but he didn't understand that. What God hath cleansed, call not thou what? Unclean, probably, yeah. Or common, I think it was. Common. Yeah, don't yeah, don't don't look at it as unclean. But, I mean, Peter had to learn that. By the way, he had to learn that several times. It, it, then he finally did learn it, and then he had to learn it again because that stuff kind of come back to him. It seemed, his old lifestyle came back to him. And I, I believe a lot of times ours does too, by the way. Take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man 
see thee which hath knowledge. That's the that's the strong Christian. That you you have knowledge. You you look at this stuff as it's not unclean. Sit at meat in the idol's temple. Shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? Now, again, I, I don't think it's wise for you, to, for you to eat in an idol's temple, by the way, either. I don't think you should affiliate with that. But, you know, again, what you're doing by the way you are acting is you are causing that weak brother who has conscience of an idol, he looks at it as absolutely wrong, and what by your actions you're saying, it's okay. And then because you, who are supposed to be a mature Christian, do it, it's going to cause him to go ahead and do it too, and he's, it's, he's going to go against his conscience and be defiled. Verse 11, And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. You know, he's going to be destroyed. He, this is not talking about go to hell. It's not, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about he's never really going to amount to what he should have. He's going to, you're going to cause him to stumble. You're going to cause him to stop. That's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to cause him to stop. And through thy knowledge shall thy weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when you sow sin against the brethren and wound, wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Think about that. I want you to realize that. When you are sinning against your brother, you are causing him to stumble by the things that you are doing. You are actually sinning against Christ. That's what the Bible says here. You're sinning against Christ. I don't think a lot of times we look at things like that. And this is what Paul said because of that. Now, he had perfect liberty. He thought there's nothing unclean in itself. But he said this, wherefore, verse 13, wherefore, if Meat make my brother to offend. If, if, if that's going to be a thing that's going to cause him to offend, offend means to stumble, to stop, to really stop serving the Lord and, and doing the right thing because he's going against his conscience. I will eat no flesh while the world standeth. I'll tell you what, if that's what it takes, I, I'll tell you what, I'll stop eating meat. If, if that would be the thing, I just don't want to cause my brother to stumble. Don't ever use the liberty that you have to, and, and, and cause somebody else to stumble because of it. So let's read verse 13 again. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. Anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer. How do you turn this machine off? Okay, there we go.